Here we are, Kroom, Florida. Gonna be doing a review today. Comparison of the V-Force 3 versus the V-Force 4. Is there a difference? Let's see. Gonna first start out with a little trail ride out here on both of them at Kroom, and then we're gonna take it to the track and see how it does it at the track. So we're gonna try to get a comparison on both in the trails and also on the track. I've done them all, guys. I've done all the V-Forces. I've done all the Boysons. After this one, it's going to be it for the Reed Vowels for a while. I'm going to be moving on to something else. But, um, yeah, if you're interested in the Boyson Rad Vowels, check my videos. I have a whole lot of videos on all these Reed systems. All right, so let's get into the review. Go ahead. You ready? And I don't feel no shame, it's a major lack I go crazy, nah, I ain't lazy Track after track, I work on this sh** daily Pass me the jack, right, this fuel got me hazy About to unpack all these shoes I've been chasing I've got visions in my head Like memories after death To be a legend instead Of something you can forget I'm living up every breath I'd rather be than be led I'll fill the seats as I spread With every word that I've said supposed to be better right it's the newest it's the latest it's the greatest I, I mean personally I don't subscribe to the whole latest and greatest things sometimes some things are just better than others it doesn't, it doesn't matter if it is the most recent that came out sometimes the older stuff is better but anyway here is why I am comparing the V Force 3 to the V Force 4 the 2022 and the 2023 YZ125 comes bone stock with a V Force 4R However, if you buy the 2022 Yamaha GYTR High Performance Race Kit for the YZ125, it comes with V Force 3. So that makes me wonder why. For the YZ125, these are the 4Rs right here. You'll see it the same. They are the same from 05 to 2022, and obviously 2023. They just haven't updated their web page here. But um, so it's the same read cage bolt pattern and same design from all them years but if you look at the v force 3 on their on their website it says discontinued and they only show this fitting up to 2015 but we know it goes up to 2023 obviously 
but it says discontinued. But damn it, if you buy the GYTR kit today, it comes with three. So are they really discontinued or what's going on here? I don't know. And is there a performance increasement on the threes over the fours? And that's why they chose to use this on the GYTR kit. That's what I'm out to find out and, you know, let's see. And I think it's a little bit important to mention that some models, like the YZ250 two-stroke, they don't have the four R's out for it. You would still get a V43. That is still the current model for the YZ250 and the RM250 all the way up to current. It's still the V43. The biggest difference between the three V43 and the V44 is the four definitely has read stops. It is rubber coated too as well, but that's from a performance perspective. It has read stops, and the V-Force 3 does not. I don't know what's going on at Moto Testinary, but I'm going to guess the reason they're still using the V-Force 3 for the YZ250 is if you watch my review, which will be a link down in the description below to, on the YZ250 where I compared the Boyson Rad Valve to the V-Force 3, the, v, the stock read pedals partially block the boost port. The boost port is right let me get you up in here here see that that port right here going in the cylinder and the hole to it right there on the stock the reed stops here these little metal things right here majorly partially block the boost port you can definitely see it from up here watch this you see it down there look at this see I moved it see and with the V-Force 3 since it does not have uh, reed stops blocking this boost port here um, it unleashes the boost port. So that's why I'm thinking they haven't upgraded the YZ250 yet to the V-Force 4. They've stuck with the V-Force 3 probably because during the development they tried out the V-Force 4 on the YZ250 and they found it was actually a performance decrease instead of an increase or maybe just equal to stock and it wasn't worth doing. So they stuck with the 3's want to make sure when you buy it you're going to feel something. I can understand that. But a YZ250 is a cylinder reed design. The reeds are on the cylinder. And a YZ125 is a case reed design. You'll see there's no spot for the reeds to bolt on here. They're actually on the case. And when you have a case reed design motor, the boost port is right here. And it's the if it has reed stops or if it doesn't, it's, it's not going to obstruct, obstruct the boost port. So... Obviously, they can move to a reed system with reed stops and not obstruct the boost port. So maybe that's why on the 125, they have updated up to the 4Rs. And on the YZ250, they have not. So now the next question is, why is the GYTR still using the V-Force 3 that does not have reed stops? Is, is there something there? Okay, going to do a preliminary ride on the 4R that I've had on the bike for a little while now. Just to get my butt dynoed into that, and then I will be bolted on the three and see how they compare. <laughs> Alright, the preliminary ride is done on the 4R, so my butt dyno is officially dialed in. I want you all to know I might have COVID after all this time. No vaccine, and I might finally have it. Because I don't feel good. Dang it. See ya. We got a turkey over there. That's not a turkey. It's a turkey. Not a turkey. It's a turkey. Alright, so time to take off the V-Force 4R and bolt on the brand new 3s. And let's see how that does. Alright, quick little back to back. Ignore the green thumb there. Quick little back to back before we bolt them in. Um, they look very similar on the intake side here. Although the 4R does sharpen that up a little bit. Where the 3 is, is more rounded. But the 3 is deeper in there before it starts. Where the 4R almost comes to the surface. You see right there so i'm not sure if that's going to make a difference also the this divider the vertical divider here it's a lot deeper they have one in the three but it's a lot deeper in there where the four comes almost all the way up to the top and as you know or you may know or may not know 
The V Force 4 comes with reed stops. The V Force 3 does not. You'll see there's reed stops on the 4, not on the 3. And then the 4 also they rubber they rubber coat where the reed pedals rest on here, kind of like the stock ones have, where the 3 does not. So the 3 doesn't have the rubber coating, and the 3 does not have um and the 3 does not have reed stops. So it might be a higher maintenance uh, reed system hopefully it's better performance if it's going to be higher maintenance let it be better performance oh yeah swapping reed valves on the fly also on the v force 4 they claim 10 percent more sur reed surface space so i'm holding them up here i'm trying to see the width yeah i guess the four is on the left it, i got it equal on the top the reed pedals equal if you look on the bottom there you'll see it's just a little bit Hard to say if that's 10%. They're equal up top. It's hard to see because of the... Uh, let me do it like this. It's hard to see because of the... Uh, because the... Uh, what do you call it? Is in the way. The reed stops. There we go. I got it even now. So let's go down to the bottom. It's a little bit wider. Not much, but a little bit. But anyway, let's bolt them on. This is what the V-Force 4 looks like with the boot on. That's the intake track right there. If you look in there, that's how that's going to look. And then the 3. Here's the 3. Oh, the sun's hitting us just right now. Let's see if we can... So, it, in my opinion, the 3 actually looks less restrictive than the four you know once you got the boot on but again i'm not an engineer but i am a rider so i can tell you how it feels so let's bolt the three on and go see how it feels v force three is now in let's take it for a trail ride see how she does and stay tuned because i will be taking her to the track after this Okay, first ride done, trail ride on the V Force 3. My initial impression of the comparison between the two, I'm going to say it feels like the V Force 3 has a little more in the mid range, a little more punch right when it goes right into the power band, or even even a little bit below the power band. Seems to have a little bit more punch than the uh, V Force 4. Almost makes rolling in the throttle easier. It also seems to give me less power in the mid and below the power band with, I mean, more power, I'm saying, with less throttle. Um, but at the same time, it almost seems like it doesn't quite rev out quite as high. But that's just an initial impression out here in the woods. So let's take it to the track and let's go back to back there. That, that way I can get a better picture. And then, I'll, who knows, I might feel differently once we get it on the track. So let's take it there and see how it does. All right, out here at MX-74. All right, the V-Force 3 is on. Going to take her out for a test ride. Let's see how she does. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
done testing out the V Force 3. Now let me go ahead and bolt on the V Force 4R and take that for a ride. Alright, pulling the V Force 3 out to put the 4 in, but I did want to mention while I'm doing this that um if there was any jet it needed, trust me, I would just if you watch any of my other reed valve reviews, I'm not scared to jet, but so far they both kind of seem identical with the jetting, so you know um, that's good. And uh, yeah, let me bolt on the fours. I'd also like to mention too that whatever my wife has, I'm sick too, so I'm not riding very good today. That's why you'll notice the footage of me riding and clip the small little clips because. I can hardly do a lap fast right now and I just get windy. But I really wanted to get this review. I really wanted to get this review in, so I'm out here even though I'm sick. V Force 4R, back on. Let's take it out for a test ride. <laughs> back in the shop for the conclusion good news is we have a clear-cut winner bad news is we have a clear-cut loser on this bike the 4R is clearly the winner you know it's hard to feel in the woods on the trail you know I did feel like this had maybe a little more a little more rolling and torque maybe it kind of got on the power band a little bit easier but once I got it on the track whatever I felt in the woods it there was no comparison on the track the four was just clearly better the extra top end revs that I said I kind of felt when I was trail riding on the 4R the extra top end revs it felt like it had on the track that means the world and it's it's just it feels like it actually has just more overall horsepower this felt like it was like a horsepower and a half shy is what my butt dyno was saying. I know some people say you really can't feel the difference with different reed pedals and stuff. And I'm not going to say that you can't, but I most certainly think I do and I can. I honestly didn't think it would be that big of a difference, but it just felt like about a horsepower and a half shy. It felt like all the modifications that I've done to this bike were kind of um, watered down with the V Force 3. If you go in the description and you check the first review I did with the V Force 4 versus the stock on this YZ125, it was a it was tight. I called the V Force 4 icing on the cake, meaning after you do all the mods, you put the V Force 4 on and it was just icing on the cake. It just extended the revs maybe just a little bit. But I really think the stock is even better than the V Force 3 on the YZ125 and it, I didn't go back to back between the three and the stock, but 
the stock versus the V-Force 4, I had to go back and forth a couple times to really feel the difference. But when comparing the 4R to the V-Force 3, I didn't have to go back to back. It was right in my face. Matter of fact, I almost couldn't pull these off fast enough. And it's sad, it's sad to say that. It wasn't anything that jumped out at me at the trail. And maybe if you're strictly a trail rider, maybe you might prefer these. But honestly, if you're looking for the type of power that this produces for trail riding, you're probably just going to be better off getting the Boyson Rad Valve. As the Boyson Rad Valve did truly um, give a nice boost in the bottom and mid. Um, and it still revved out good. I didn't prefer the type of revs it had. But the Boyson Rad Valve is better suited for that type of... Uh, if you're looking for the woods type of power you might prefer this over the v force 3 honestly I, I i just i i don't like these at all they didn't do good on on the yz125 as you know they did great on the yz250 when i compared them all three again the links will be in the description where i compared the v force 3 to the boyson rad valve to the stock reed pedals on the yz252 stroke but if you don't remember the biggest thing there was without reed stops it on on the YZ250 it unleashes the boost port where on the YZ125 since it's a case reed motor having reed stops doesn't block the boost port so we don't have that to worry about on the YZ125 so that could have been the biggest difference but with that in mind while I'm taking a second to talk about the YZ250 I have noticed that they have a new uh, v force 4 r out it, the new ones have an h at the end and if you read about them they talk about having higher tension reed pedals for better top end performance but the biggest difference is look no reed stops now that's a pretty significant change for a 4r because if you look down here every 4r has reed stops except for this new model right there the h but if you keep going everyone has read stop so this is something new that they're doing as of right now they're only offering it for the new ktms it's a new product i'm curious there it is again i just it did a loop through i'm curious if they're going to be offering that for the yz252 stroke in the future i surely hope they do because it'll have it won't have read stops which blocks the boost port yet it'll give the extra power that the 4r has over the three i think that's going to be a winner v force if you catch this please make that I'm waiting for it. But yeah, the 4Rs are great. I mean, they're just so clean and crisp right off the bottom all the way up. It has the same response going all the way through the power band, and it just revs super high. Now, keep in mind, I have some mods to this bike, and as I mentioned in the review where I compared the 4R to the stock, um, on a bone stock bike, you might not notice so much of a difference, but as the mods start adding up, it's kind of like a cold air induction on a car. If you just throw a cold air air filter on a car alone, you might not notice a big difference. But if you already have a full exhaust system and a tune and everything like that, then it starts, uh, them things start to add up. And they work together. And two strokes definitely work together. Because all the parts work together because it's more about resonance in the system. Um, just... For you guys that are curious, the modifications I have to this bike is a works Pro Circuit works, works uh, pipe with a shorty silencer, and I have the head rechambered at a 32,000 squish clearance, and the compression ratio just a little bit higher than stock. I'm also running a BR10 ECMIX plug made by NGK. That's a winner too. And the exhaust port is polished. And the current jetting is a 420 main stock needle in the stock position. A 37.5 pilot and the air screw at 2.5 turns. So after seeing how well the 4Rs perform my bike versus the 3, it makes me wonder for the people that have the 2022 and 2023 that buy the GYTR kit that comes with the 3s. I'm wondering if they throw their 4R stock back in, it, it might perform better. I don't know. That would be something I'd have to try, but I I, I think it might. I But you'd have to try it and know. But these just didn't do good in my bike. So in closing, after doing all these reed pedal reviews, here's what I'm going to say or suggest. If you're good with the stock, the stock is great. Good feel from the bottom all the way to the top, just like the 4R, although the 4R does make a little more top-end power and kind of a just a 
general better feel up top. Um, I would avoid the threes, and um, if you got the threes, you might even want to try putting your stalkers back in just, just to see. You might actually like the stalkers better. If you're looking for more bottom end type power for the woods, um, you're probably it's probably going to be the Boyson Rad Valve. Um, although the stock is not bad too, and even the V Force Four, you know, try it out. You might like it. I, I've done a hair scramble with the V Force Four, and it was good. But if I didn't want to ever have to use the clutch, I would probably just put the Boyson on. But if you got a pipe and silencer, a head mod, or if you're just starting to stack up some modifications. I promise you, the 4R is the one you're going to want on the YZ125. That's the one that's going to make all your other modifications shine. And that's a good thing. And if it's YZ250, um, the only two options that I consider good right now for that is stock. Or if you want the max horsepower, get the V Force 3 for the YZ250. Because they currently don't make the 4R for the YZ250. As you know, I've stated, I believe it's because it has read stops that will block the boost port. But fingers crossed they make this thing soon for it. Well, that's it, guys. That's pretty much a wrap for all the reed pedal reviews that I'm going to be doing for a while. I'll be moving on to some new things. If you enjoy this kind of stuff and you're not already subscribed, please click subscribe. And uh, I appreciate every single one of you guys that watch this. Catch you later.